What's up guys, Mike here at the Detroit Borg with the all new Kindle Fire HD, the newest seven inch tablet from Amazon. Essentially HD because this has a resolution of 1280 by 800. This is a big improvement over the existing Kindle Fire which is now cheaper. So this is 199 for 16 gigs or 249 for 32 gigs. It's available only as a Wi-Fi model. Right now there is no 3G version. Uh, now there is another Kindle Fire HD that's 8.9 inches, which I'll review later. That's shipping much later than this version. Now this is how it arrives to you from Amazon. Basically, this is the shipping container and the box for the device. And you have a little pull tab here to pull it open. So you flip this open. There is our Kindle Fire. And just like before, we have a little envelope up here. Uh, with some information on how to use it. So you can see your ports, how to unlock it, basic information like that. So we're gonna skip that and go right to the device. You can see it's wrapped in plastic and we're gonna set this aside for just a minute so we can see we have a USB cable, micro USB cable here for charging and syncing. Now what's interesting here is you do not have a wall charger here. So you have to buy that separately if you want it, but you can use a USB port on your computer to charge this tablet. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the tablet itself. Sands the plastic, so let's peel that off. Slide it out. Now taking a look around the Kindle Fire HD, one of the things that stands out the most are the speakers. There are two speakers here. They've partnered with Dolby for Dolby Stereo Sound, so you get better audio than most tablets. Most tablets make do with just one audio speaker, usually mono. It doesn't sound very good, so they've definitely boosted the sound quality on this device to highlight its major feature, which is movie watching, TV watching, and that sort of consumption from the Amazon store. Now along the side you have your controls. So we have our volume rocker here, which is pretty flush fitting here. You have a little nub here to feel it and you have your sleep wake button along with a headphone jack up top you have a microphone now on the bottom you'll find two ports one is a micro usb connector for charging as well as adding data you also have a micro hdmi connector they don't include the cable but this allows you to buy a separate cable and connect this to a high def tv to stream your media from amazon directly onto your high def tv now on the back we have a matte textured finish and on the side we have a hard plastic bezel. It feels very nice to hold in the hand, very very grippable, very comfortable to hold. Now taking a look at the front, we have that 7 inch display resolution of 1280 by 800 which is good for 216 ppi. Uh, up here we have our HD camera, front facing camera for things like Skype. Uh, there is no rear facing camera for photography. We also have an ambient light sensor in here for adjusting the screen brightness. Let's go ahead and start using our Kindle for the first time. And again, I've already booted this up. Basically, you tap and hold the power button along the side, which is a little hard to feel. I guess I'm touching the volume button. Where is the power button? There it is. That's the power button. And now the interesting thing here is that the lock screen wallpapers will rotate. So every time I uh, lock it or wake it up, it changes the, uh, the background. So again, we have the slider here. And also worth pointing out is that this will work in any orientation, landscape, portrait, uh, no matter how you hold it. Uh, so let's go ahead and wake this up and get it started. First thing it wants me to do is to log into my wireless network. So I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm in Eastern Standard Time. We're going to continue. Now the interesting thing here is that because I purchased this with my Amazon account, it knows who I am. So it's already registered this device. It's registered to me. So I can click continue. Now once you register your Kindle Fire, your lock screen will change. You will always get these ads. So ads unfortunately become standard on the Kindle Fire HD. Now if you want to get rid of that, you do have to pay Amazon an additional $15. So in fact, if we lock the screen a few times here, you can see that each ad will change. And you have uh, the option to unlock the device or go to the ad itself. Now before we get into the user interface, let's just talk about some of the specs. So we have a dual core TI OMAP processor running at about 1.2 gigahertz. This is definitely behind the Nexus 7, which is running at uh, Tegra 3, uh, quad core Tegra 3, much faster processor. Uh, but the operating system seems to be pretty smooth overall. Now there isn't a lot of storage here. You can't expand the storage. You either get 16 gig or 32 gig. Uh, so you can't insert a micro SD card, for example, to expand storage, but Amazon does give you, especially if you're using Amazon services, you can store a lot of your purchases on Amazon itself. So you have unlimited storage for anything you purchase, such as movies, music, and that sort of thing. So anything you purchase from them, you can basically stream to this tablet and you can store it locally if you want. Uh, we also have a gyroscope as well. 
as well as an accelerometer for gaming. Now taking a look at our user interface here, you can see we have a familiar carousel view. In the lower right corner, you have something new called favorites. So if you tap favorites, you can see all of these are things that you can add directly to favorites. So you always have quick access to them. So for example, if you download lots of apps, documents, books, movies, whatever, you can add them to your favorites. So for example, if I want to add this book, Steve Jobs, to my favorites, all I have to do is tap on and hold it, add to favorites, and if I tap favorites, I can now see it down there. And I can also remove them by removing them from favorites. And you can also remove these devices or remove these from the carousel, again, just by tapping and holding them and remove from carousel. Now up top, you have your battery indicator as well as Wi-Fi, the time, as well as the name of this tablet, which is Michael's fifth Kindle. Uh, so you can see I've had a lot of Kindles and I think I've, I have way more than five, but uh, the only ones that are active right now are, uh, this makes it the fifth one. So anyway, you can swipe down here and you have access. Again, this is pretty familiar to Android, uh, so you can, Lock the screen rotation. You can change the volume here. So uh, unlike the original or the previous Kindle Fire, you now have both physical controls for volume as well as on-screen controls. You can control your brightness. You can set it to auto, which will use that ambient light sensor. And you can scroll it. You also have Wi-Fi, so you can control your Wi-Fi. You can set it to airplane mode. Oh, it does have Bluetooth. I'm sorry, I misspoke on that. It does have Bluetooth. Uh, we have, you can toggle Wi-Fi on and off. You can see our networks. You can add a network. And you can see we have more controls here. So you have the home button, which will take us back home. Uh, we also have sync. So we can turn sync on or activate sync. And we have more controls. It takes us to some of our settings here. So basically, it's a quick way of getting to all of our settings. Now, when you hold it in portrait mode, you do get a different view than landscape mode. So you can see, for example, you get some suggestions down here, which you can scroll through. So for example, if I tap, if I scroll to the Steve Jobs book, you can see my suggestions change. So there you go. The road, evolution. And you can see in portrait mode that you get a search box instead of having a dedicated search function. Now taking a look at some of our options up here, we have shop, game apps, books, music, videos, newsstand, audiobooks, web, photos, docs, and offers. So if you go to shop, again, this is pretty familiar. You have a search box, uh, so you can type in your search directly. You can search for anything like Apple. So if we type in Apple, you have several options here. You can search in stores, search in electronics. There's a lot of electronics for Apple searches, but you get the idea here. And you can also go to library, so you can search your existing library, or you can do a web search by tapping right here. Now you can see we have Bing search here, which is default uh, on the Kindle Fire. You can change this under settings. In fact, if you tap settings here, uh, you can go to settings, and you can change your search engine from Bing to Google. So you have other options here, including block pop-up windows. You can accelerate page loading, which is using their Silk uh, search en or Silk browser engine, which basically preloads the page on a server, and you can t turn that on and off. You can encrypt, and you have lots and lots of options like clearing search. You can do incognito mode, that sort of thing. Uh, and of course, we're now at our web browser, so we'll take a look at that a bit later. Uh, we have our games here. Now, the Amazon does have so, something like Game Center or Gaming Account you can log into and create a password so people can find you on the Kindle Fire and game with you. So it's kind of like Game Center if you're familiar with that on iOS. Uh, of course, uh, you can go to your device to load games or you can go to the cloud. Right now, I haven't downloaded any games to this tablet, but you can see I've already downloaded some games from Amazon previously. And all I have to do is tap on them and it will load them for me. But you can also go to the store and start searching for more games. Now the store also has that carousel or gallery view up here and you can see all of the icons down here and you can see they're sorted by categories like top paid, top free. So it helps you to discover games you might want to play. Now we also have an app store. So here we can download all of our apps from the cloud. These are apps I've previously downloaded such as Netflix and Facebook, Pandora and more. And you can see what's already downloaded on the device or you can go right to the store and see quite a large selection. It keeps getting bigger, uh, certainly bigger than it was when the Kindle Fire launched about a year ago. So you have games, you know, things are organized by games, utilities, uh, new releases. If you go to all categories, you can see even more. So magazines, books, comments, a lot of this is uh, duplicated from the uh, stores on the home screen. So entertainment, lifestyle, so there you go. And you can tap on any of these, download them. Some of them are free, some of them cost a little money. So it's a lot like any other app store. 
And of course we have books. This is where it all started with the Kindle. Here you have some of my previous purchases uh, and I haven't downloaded any of them to the Kindle yet. So you can see this is everything in cloud storage. You don't have to keep it on the device, but if you want to see what is on your device, you can see right there. You can see we have a dictionary which was included and I have one book that I downloaded already. You can see it's got a check mark indicating I've downloaded that previously. Just bring it up. You can see it takes me to where I last left off and I have many of the utilities I'm familiar with on Kindle such as bookmarking. So I can bookmark a page. You can see I have a little blue bookmark up here. I can tap that to remove it. I can share. So this uh, integrates with my social networking so I can share a passage with Twitter or a page with Twitter. You also have X-Ray, which is a big feature with Amazon. This is definitely unique to Amazon, and X-Ray basically breaks the book down into characters and locations and indexes them for you so you can quickly jump to them. So, for example, on this page, there's John Scully, Andy Hertzfeld, and Microsoft. If I go to the chapter, I can see all of the characters and locations, uh, and if I go to the book, I can see much more. And you can see you have a timeline view up here. Uh, to show you where that name appears. Obviously, Steve Jobs is a majority feature in this book. Uh, and you can see how many people, terms, you see lots of things. And not all books support X-Ray, but uh, uh, I haven't run into one that hasn't yet. You can also go directly to a chapter or a page. Uh, so for example, everything is already indexed for you. So you can go to a page or a location just by tapping it in. So for example, if I want to go to 235, Go to the page. You also have settings here so you can adjust your fonts, the backgrounds. Uh, so if you want larger fonts, smaller fonts, medium font. Actually, in order to increase the font, you just keep tapping left and right. So it's kind of like a, uh, a scrubber. You also can change the background to white, sepia, or black so you can reverse it. I tend to prefer to read in that mode. Uh, this is also easier on the eyes than this mode. You can also change your margins to wide, narrow or normal and you can change your font so you have a limited selection of fonts here and you can also turn on text to speech which uh, depends on whether the book supports it or not now the kindle fire also debuts something called immersion reading so this allows you to merge both audiobooks and printed textbooks so you can basically listen to the audiobook in unison with the printed book so Steve Jobs is one of those books that has both uh, not all books of course support this it depends on how they partnered with Amazon or if they even have an audiobook version in order to activate it all I have to do is tap on it and you can see I get my, my scrubber here to play it back so I hit play the engineers were horrified now you can see as it's reading, the text is highlighting and following along. Even 25 years later, Jobs seethed when recalling the decision. It's the main reason the Macintosh sales slowed and Microsoft got to dominate the market. Now, of course, the Kindle Fire HD also supports WhisperSync. So once you leave off at this book, it will automatically load on every other Amazon app or device you have. So, for example, this position will be saved on my iPhone app or my iPad app or my Kindle uh, ebook reader such as the uh, Kindle Touch. So you get the idea. WhisperSync works pretty well. Nothing new there. Now let's go to music. Now music also works with cloud storage. So you can buy music directly on Amazon and it will store it for you and you can stream it directly or you can download it to the device. Uh, so you can see music downloaded to the device right now. I have downloaded nothing. I don't really need to because I'm connected to Wi-Fi. So I can go right to my Coldplay album here and start playing it directly from the cloud drive. Now if you're playing music in the background, you can continue to do what you're doing. And if you want to control your music, just bring down your notification panel and you can see you have controls up here for controlling it. You can also tap on it to get right to the app that's playing the music. Now on to videos. Again, this works with either cloud storage or uh, your onboard storage. So you can tap library to see what you have on your device. Actually, I've never purchased videos from Amazon, so I have none in my cloud or on my device. Now, WhisperSync also works with videos, so if you start watching the video here, you can pick up on another Amazon device. Now, the great thing about the Kindle Fire is that it also works with Amazon Prime, which gives me access, free streaming access to a lot of content. So, for example, I have Prime Instant Videos here, uh, so I can, you know, I can search for some of them. I can see what I've watched previously. I can see TV shows. Uh, and that sort of thing. But uh, what I want to look at here is Prime Instant Videos. These are videos that I don't have to pay extra for. Uh, so for example, if we grab, let's see, let's grab Thor. So we're gonna go ahead and watch now. 
So you can see we can scroll around <clears throat> and you can see the X-ray features here. So you can see all the actors that appear here. You can jump to the full cast, that sort of thing. So that's videos. Now let's go to newsstand. Newsstand, of course, is the periodical section, uh, which allows you to subscribe to magazines. And if you go to your library, again, you can see what you have in cloud storage or on your device. And I've never purchased anything from Amazon uh, as periodical, so I don't have anything to look at. But if you look at the store here, you can see just how many titles are in here. So for example, I like automotive magazines. So I can go to my favorite, one of my favorites is Motor Trend. So I have a free, now I have a free 30 day trial with this issue. So let's try it out. I'm going to subscribe now. And the monthly price is 99 cents for each issue. All right, so our issue is downloaded and we can start looking at it. So we can basically turn a page just like we would a real magazine. We can even pinch the zoom to see the text. Uh, it doesn't, it's not necessarily ideally formatted for a tablet. You can see the text is kind of small, but the high resolution does make it pretty readable. Now instead of zooming in to look at the text, you can also double tap and it will simplify the text, give you simple images, a larger font, and you can swipe through it just like you would a Kindle book. So you get all the same functionality, including text size, line spacing, and you have the search, search functionality and that sort of thing. So it works pretty well. Now we also have audiobooks and I've already downloaded one audiobook uh, just so we can demonstrate that uh, immersion reading feature. And so we can just start playing the audiobook just like we would any other music. And company. That was as and we can dangerous as go home and continue to listen and do other things and control it from the drop down. Now we also have a web browser which is pretty familiar to most Android users. You have tabbed browsing, you can add a new tab. You can see uh, that we have the starter page uh, which allows you to tab between your bookmarks and your history. If you go to starter here you have most viewed, uh, what you have personally viewed, trending now. I'm not sure how it's aggregating that but those are websites that are trending and selected sites or sites that Amazon is focusing on. Uh, and uh, you can also just type in the URL or you can do a search. And again, you have several options to choose from in terms of search. Now let's go back to where I was, which was The Verge. You have full screen mode here. So full screen mode fills the screen, removes every extraneous bit of UI. And if you want to get to the UI uh, or the uh, address bar, just pull down and you see it appears in there. You can search and do that sort of thing. You also have the search option here, which allows you to search text, search the web, search your device. So that's it. You also have the back button, pretty familiar territory. Now the only problem with that is unfortunately you can't sync your bookmarks from Google, although I'm sure there are solutions in the works. Now you also have photos here. Now photos are interesting. You can download photos directly to your Amazon Cloud Drive. Uh, you can also put them directly on your device. Now this does have a camera, but it doesn't have a camera app. It's largely meant to be used by apps that can take advantage of the HD video camera. And of course, you can also load your Facebook photos. So if you want a Facebook viewer, that's another option. Now we also have Docs. Now Docs allows you to read things like PDFs or Word documents and many others. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can take a look at all the formats that are supported here, but it's quite extensive. You can also email documents to a specific email address that Amazon provides you. Uh, so for example, if you want to see your documents on the Kindle, just send them to that email and you'll have access to it. It will store it in your Amazon Cloud account and you can access it from the cloud and download it to your device. So if it's a document that this device may not support email is one way of doing it. I think it converts it to a PDF. Now we also have offers which is everything that appears on your lock screen. All those offers that appear on the lock screen so if you want to get back to them at a later date that's something you can do. Now something that has been released at the time of this video is Kindle Free Time which is basically a kid mode for the Kindle Fire HD. This is very interesting because very few tablet makers have done this. I know Sony recently did this with their tablets uh, but, but it's a basically a, ki a, a kid mode that uh, changes what uh, the children has access to or the child has access to. So for example, they only have, can launch certain kid-friendly apps, certain, certain kid-friendly TV shows and movies. Uh, web browsing is restricted. And you have a lot of control over that. So you can adjust exactly what they have access to, how long they have access to, how long they can web browse, how long they can watch movies, and that sort of thing. So you get a lot of control for uh, families who really want to be able to give their tablet to a child, but they don't have enough restrictions on the device. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with the Kindle Fire HD. It's definitely a big improvement over the last generation, which was a fairly low quality device. Uh, in particular, the screen resolution, which couldn't keep up 
uh, particularly with text. Text didn't look very sharp. Not the best ebook reader on the world in the world. Uh, high resolution screens particularly important in that capacity. It's also very rich, uh, deeply contrasted, nice color. So everything looks very nice. Uh, images on magazines in particular, movies have a nice deep contrast and uh, everything just looks very sharp on the screen. You get excellent off-axis viewing and you can see quite a bit of details. Now they talk a lot about anti-glare. Glare is still as bad as any other tablet. Um, better than the Kindle that preceded it, but the Kindle had especially bad glare problems. I don't think they did anything to that glass to mitigate glare. Uh, overall, definitely an interesting product for Amazon consumers. I'm not sure where this fits in for most people. I don't particularly care to have an Amazon only tablet. I'd rather have something like the Nexus 7 despite its weaker uh, screen, its poor speaker, uh, but uh, you get a much more flexible operating system including voice search with Google Now which I think is incredible. Uh, definitely a reason to have it. This has no voice search or no, no voice dictation. It's really not a productivity tool at all. You really, This is meant entirely for consumption while other tablets can kind of bridge both. So really, this is a consumption tablet for Amazon customers. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get a lot of benefits here. You can access movies, TV shows, and free books. Uh, if you're an Amazon Prime member right on this tablet. So overall, that's going to do for me guys in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.